While the vibe is warm and easy, you don't know. Warm and easy, keep it locked. It's on the strong one for that. Yo, this is Daville. When I'm in town, I keep it locked to where I get the beat. Yep, on the radio with DJ Warm and Easy. Linville Thompson, it's a special request to DJ Warm and Easy. And big up the world beat sound. This is Mojo Morgan from Morgan Age, and you're listening to DJ Warm and Easy. This is Oakton Lindo, and you're in tune to Warm and Easy. Yo, man, it's Graham Morgan once again for the key. So, what you're saying is all about roots, rock, reggae music. Seen right here with DJ Warm and Easy, world beat sound. Right here in the UK, yeah? Where everybody feeling okay. Graham Morgan said that. World reggae beat. Hey, DJ Warm and Easy. The thing, mother road. This is the World Reggae Beat on Diverse FM 102.8 with me, DJ Warm and Easy. And we've got a oh special yeah. guest today on the program is the reggae legend called Carl Malcolm. Me like how you do it. You make me feel sweet. Me like how you rocking me. Right off on my feet. Carl Malcolm, greetings and welcome to the World Reggae Beat. Yeah, man, thank you. Tell us a bit about yourself, how you got started on the reggae music scene. I got started reggae music scene from was a you know, a little tat. I always wanted to be a musician. I used to do a lot of practice from um, most of the big artists that was out at that time from the rock and roll era, country and western, soul music as we knew it. I used to listen to a lot of Ray Charles and Brooke Benton, you know, people from those era. Was that the type of main music that was being played on the radio that time in Jamaica then? Yeah, that's what the type of music we used to hear. Because that type in Jamaica, we had one radio station coming from WNZ, I think. And then late nights, you could hear a program coming from Cuba and other places. Sorry, not WHR, Radio Jamaica at the time. And so, um, radio wasn't even around that time, really. It was kind of snapping music, snapping music. I don't know what you call it, you know, like, I think they call it bubblegum, that type of thing. Okay. Anyway, it wasn't really reggae till the ska came around and then from the ska came, you know, various music changes. When the ska came in, that's when you start to listen hard and say, yeah, this is, this is something I might want to do in the future? Well, no, I always listen to soul music a whole lot, you know. And I started practicing soul music from a long time. Um, when ska came around, I got involved in ska and rock steady, I got involved. I just followed up with the era, whatever happened, whatever changed, I just went through the changes. Is that when you joined up with the group, the Volcanoes then? Around that yes, time. the early part, yeah, Volcanoes. Who were the other members of that group? How many people was in that group? Um, the Volcanoes, Gans, Sly Dunbar. Um, Sly Dunbar, you said? Sly Dunbar, yeah. Al Brown was the lead, you know. He got me involved in the group. The drum was called Nat Cole, and the bass player was called Jimmy Harris, Ranchy McLean. These are people who used to be in the group. Then, later on, Cynthia Richards joined up. For what studio was he recording with at that time, or was he just performing as a, a band at first? I was performing as a band, and then I went to, um, I recorded for a first song for Coxon, a song called Father Free Us, in the early days. And while I was singing with the band, Volcanoes, I met Clive Chin from Randy's. And after, you know, trying to get involved with him for several times for him to record me, he came past one day that he told me to come down to the studio, and we went down here. And, we started from the 74, 74, we got no gesturing, we made a big impact. Jean's mother said that I should leave her alone, but how can I do that? When I want her in my home I've watched her change from toys to boys And now she is my size So how could I forget her now When she can share my life Mommy, I love your daughter No gesturing No one can make me leave her It's no gesturing can tell her anything you want, but I'll never let her out of my sight. Tell her how much I'm not her type, but one day she's gonna be my wife. Mommy, I love your daughter. No gesturing, no 
76, that's when we had three major hit records. Bob left Jamaica and came to um, Delaware. Things wasn't going too bad, too good with him. And he left and came to Delaware and started working the, in a garage in some factory in the night over the vegetable. But anyway, the band was there not doing much around. They took the band in the studio and recorded the album with me. 
the album is still not released. Wow. Have you ever thought yeah. about releasing the album? <laughs> oh, well, um, it's, I don't have the masters. Clive Chin have the masters. Wow, and he's had them all these years. Yeah, he still have it all these years. Tell us more about this tune, No Jesting. Was that your first recording then, No Jesting? Up for... No, that was my first recording. That was my first hit. Okay. I did about three songs for Coxon. He released one, Father Frears, and then he didn't release the other ones. And then I did a song for Ruby Edwards called um, Make It When You Try. That wasn't really successful either. Then when I did the song for No Jesting for Randy's, that's when things started happening. And when you did that song, No Jesting, was it a straight hit straight away in Jamaica? Straight, yeah, from the, from the get-go. Was it as big a hit in Jamaica as it was in the UK? Because I remember when that tune came out, it was massive over here. But that, that tune is massive. That song stayed several weeks and it number one in Jamaica. And yeah, that was a really massive hit. And then the follow-up, Miss Wireways, did that come shortly after as well? Yeah, that came, yeah, that came shortly after. The way I read up this thing at the moment about your career, it seems like Fatty Boom Boom was the one that was the bigger hit out of the three. From you know. Yes, that, that's a bigger one. Hey, Fatty Boom Boom, my sweet sugar dumpling. Hey fatty boom boom, let me tell you something No, not because you're so big and fat Don't believe I'm afraid of that self praise is no recommendation I'm looking for creation Hey fatty boom boom, the sweet sugar dumpling Fatty boom boom, let me tell you something. To me that look like mouse on a one dollar bread. I wouldn't stop trying till I drop down dead. Never let your big size fool you. The cooler day you be cool. studio transferring the air track to 16 track because we used to record the air tracks the time. The engineer that came there to do the, the, the transferring, he set up a new board. He was in the studio where we, you know, I was recording Fatty Boom Boom and he was impressed by it and he got a copy, adopted it and sent to England right away and his group that he was involved in called it the Diversions, they did a version of uh, Fatty Boom Boom but it was so close together that people didn't even know that it was me. They thought it was Max Romeo. By the time Randy sent copies to England, the, the people in the studio in, in, the, in the shop didn't, didn't stop the, the 45 with a proper label. So it went up there with Max Romeo's label. So people thought it was Max Romeo because in England at the time, Max was pretty popular. Since he had um, previous songs called like Wet Dream and he was touring England for quite some time. So people thought it was him. Okay. So then after this song went to diversions, you no, know, and they recorded it and put it out. It started hitting the charts before my tune. So then they put me, for, they took me from, you know, what I was doing in Jamaica and rushed me to England to appear on top of the pops to make people know that, well, hey, I'm, I'm the writer, I'm the singer, I'm, I'm present, my presence known. How long did you stay in the UK for then when, when you came over that time? That time, about three weeks. Okay, and was that your first time in the UK as well at that time? Yeah. And what was, the, what was the vibes like? It was very good, but um, what really happened, negotiations broke down with the company. 
because what what Randy's wanted to do at the same time was to push the whole album and UK records at the time. But I, I guess some price thing was involved, and they didn't want to take out the whole album right now. They wanted to um, get the band from Jamaica, get Sly and, and, and Bangkok, and, and do um, a tour. Anyway, there was a negotiation and broke down, and that did happen at that time. So um, if that happened at that time, then everything would be you know, more profitable for me as an artist and thing, but it didn't happen that way, so. At that time, Dave Cash was a big radio DJ in the UK, and he, yes. was, he was on a major station called Capital Radio, which was playing Capital your... Capital Radio, yeah. And your song went to number two. Yes. On the station, uh, the hit line yes. listeners yes. chart, which at that time was a good thing because it was record sales that brought your records up into the charts. Record sales. Yeah, yes. so that just shows it must have sold... Many thousands of many copies. thousands, many uh, million. It's up in the millions by now. It's up in millions by now. And the thing is, as well, you didn't only do lovers, you know, because like Fatty Boom Boom, No Jester, and those tunes were like lovers kind. They were rated as lovers rock kind of style of reggae in the UK yeah. at that time. But there, you also did roots music as well, because you had a track called Repatriation, which was recorded in 1977 with Rankin Trevor as the DJ. Yes, yeah, that's, that's it. And that was a big tune as well. Yes, it is. A two-born African Yes, he's a Rasta man And he's awaiting repatriation Repatriation How did that one come about then? Because that was kind of a change of style for you then, wasn't it? After doing no gesturing and stuff. Well, that's, that's a more cultural music. That's a more on the, on the spiritual level, you know, like sit back and relax. I start to think about the about Rasta movements. I start to listen and watch the Rasta movements and start to read a lot about Africa and the belief that, you know, we are really from Africa. Repatriation is a most. And a lot of things, you know, easily influenced by who is around, the big artists that are around, you're singing about that type of thing. We start to look into it and get the influential, you know, attitudes uh, towards that topic. So, I mean, me being a singer songwriter, I started writing a lot of songs about various articles, various feelings. And um, that came about naturally because it's like our belief. And, you know, the black oppressed man in Jamaica had nothing to do with sit down and write a song. And then you find yourself writing a, a song that fits your environment. But my main thing is really writing, you know. Right. So do you write for my, other artists as well? Yes, I've written songs for quite a few people. I written some light Hemings, one called um, Black Man Time. I written, I've written songs for quite a few people, even like Bette Midler. She did over no gesturing. Bette Midler? Yeah, and the song that, and an album called Song for New Depression. To oh. check that album, you see. So she did it in country and western style then? No, she did it in reggae. The album called uh, Songs for New Depression, written by Carlton Malcolm, because that's my, that's my legal name, Carlton. When I write songs, you find Carlton Malcolm and, and that. So you find a lot of Carl Mal Carlton Malcolm writing. As well as coming to England, did you go to other countries as well to perform at that time? Or was it just a UK bounty? UK, America, um, Bahamas, Canada. So what are you doing at the moment? What's happening for Carl Malcolm at the moment? Well, right at the moment, no, I've, I've got a band, family band with my wife and my son, it's called Positive Vibration. And we do shows, nightclubs, um, all different types of functions. Band thing is different from just an artist in touring. 
you know, in Bhavna Bands, we put the album in various festivals or whatever it is. And um, I've got a new album out. We put a new album out last year. It's called Sign and Wonder. And quite a few songs are on it. Let's talk about some of the artists that you've performed on stage. Talking to you off air, you said to me that, you, well, you know people like um, George Decker, Sidney Crooks, Lodi. Yeah. You know, what was it like working with those people? Those are my earlier days working with, you know, like with Desmond Decker, Wheelers, Mittels, Melodians. I used to work with all, all those people and more recently come up to Berries and Maxi Priest and artists I've worked with as artists over the years. How many albums would you say you've put out since you started recording? Four albums. Four albums. Can you tell us the name of those albums? First one was called Malcolm Tonight, and then one called Newborn, and one called um, You're Not Alone, and the last one is called uh, Sign and Wonder. That's the most recent one that you've released, Sign and Wonder? Yeah, most recent one. And I have two singles out now that I just recorded, Heavy Beat. Got two singles, one called um, Don't Worry Daddy. That's a very hot one, it's getting good reviews. And the other one is called Just See Them. Just See Them. Just See Them. It can't hide now. Just See Them. Just See Them. When they're making the Hebrew decisions. Just See Them. When they're planting the seeds of deception. Just See Them. Setting traps for their fellow man Can you see them? Can I go beat them with the word of the rich man? Let me ask you, because some artists say they made music years ago and they didn't get any money for it. Are you getting your correct money for your recordings, what you did back then? Are you, you know? I don't know if, every, if I get every money I'm supposed to get, but I'm getting money. I don't know if I'm being squeezed. Since I had my thing published from a long time with publishing companies, Every time that something happens, my publishing company pay me. So the guy who's trying to tell me lying can't tell me lie no more because my thing's published and whatever happens, my statement is going to, you know, prove yeah. him wrong. When I came to England in 74, I signed up with PRS, Performer Society, and they have about 100 songs from the register. And I've been recording those songs through, the, through time and even those songs, songs that I haven't, haven't heard in a while. I still get statements about them being, you know, played all over the world, different, different parts of the world. And at least I know that my thing is out there and it really started and it's been noted that Carl Malcolm is still in effect. That's good. And also, when you perform your, you know, your live shows, do you, do you, as well as doing your current songs, do you do some of the, the classics as well for the people? Yeah? Yes, man, I'm classic, definitely. People, you see, those are my signature songs, people. People yeah. want to hear those songs all the time. Yeah. So I, I do some of my new stuff. You know, I do some new stuff that are that are out there being played, and then definitely the, the older songs are what the people, the people in my age group. But you don't get bored of singing those songs again, do you? <laughs> no, man. I mean, it become natural. Yeah. <laughs> Some natural, you know, like you, you know, you have to do it because that's what the people want to hear. And I mean, those music's timeless. You can't put a date on them yes. because they can yes. play. You can put in one of your CD them, and you know, say you don't have to worry about the youth them running about the place and hearing. No, them, you know, it's pure good music. Still good music. Well, Carl Mark, it's been a great pleasure having you on the, on the World Reggae Beat and we look forward and hope that you can get over here in the UK so that we can get to see you live and direct on stage. And if you do get to come over, just link me. Make with us. Yeah, you know what's going on. But all the guys will do your part. Just put the record out there and make it play, you know? Yeah, man, for real. And, I'll, you know, before you go then, tell us the names of those songs, that the current songs that you've got out at the moment again. What's the name of them once again? Don't Worry, Daddy. That's on, work, that's on heavy beat record and the next song called Just ja, ja, See Them. So those are two main ones that you're focusing on at the moment, as well as the album, yeah? As well as the album, called um, Sen and Wanda. 
Sign and Wonder is the name of the album. Sign and Wonder is the name of the album, yeah. Stan CD, Baby, iTunes and all them in the market. And whose label is that one on? Is that Heavy Beat as well? And no, Sign and Wonder is on Malcolm Family Music. Is that your own label then? You got your own, own label? My, my wife, me and my wife and my son, we oh, do them. Okay. We do the music and that. And tell us about any website where people can tune in to hear, to look up your music and... I'm still on an old time website with, with um, my space, <laughs> Carl Malcolm okay. PP Band. Say that again, please, once again. MySpace.com slash Carl Malcolm PV Band. I'm not on everything over there. But I put out a lot of my shows on Facebook every week, everything that I put it over there. And, you know, people can see you. People seen for years, they find me, so. Before you go, I want you to big up some people that will be listening right now to the World Reggae Beat and listening to Carl Malcolm. Big up some people around the world, let you know. Well, I want to big up first my DJ, I want to I want to big up all the people in England, especially a man like Rico, you know, Rico Rodriguez from long, long time. Yeah, man. You know, I say it's just a matter of time. Rupi Edwards, Jimmy London, man who died in England long time. I know them. Big up Rich and Francis every time. So once again, uh, Carl Malcolm, many thanks for joining us here on the World Reggae Beat. No respect. Yes, sir. I'm going to talk to you soon. No respect. Bless it. Carl Malcolm from the World Beat Sound. Special dedication. Yeah, man. DJ Waman Easy. Jean's mother said that I should leave her alone But how can I do that when I want her in my home I've watched her change from toys to boys and now she is my size How can I forget her now when she can share my life No dress to him, no one can make it leave her, it's no dress to win. So you can tell her anything you want, and never let her out of my sight. Tell her how much I'm not her type, but one day she's gonna be my wife. Mommy, I love your daughter. No dress to win. No one can make me leave her. It's no dress to win. She told me I should wait until you're 21. But she just don't understand that I'm a very impatient man. I won't let the horse run away before I go to close the gate and I. Don't believe in a promises Promises can't fool my belly So mommy I love your daughter No gesturing No one can make it leave her It's no gesturing No, 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 no. DJ Woman Easy Give me the sales man Call my album on the world beat song Special education so you can tell her anything you want i never let her out of my sight Tell her how much I'm not her type But one day she's gonna be my wife Mommy, I love your daughter No gesturing No one can make it leave her It's no gesturing World Reggae Beat Hey, DJ Woman Easy The thing man a road Shot a road At a road And it's a cars road Black a road Mad a road Check it out This is Diverse FM 102.8